All right. Hello. So we are back here with another bridge session. And this is the WBL Thursday night unit game on June 23rd. And this actually also happened to be an NAP qual. So I hope you guys all got your NAP cues and you're looking forward to playing at the district level North American pairs in September. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the very first board, uh, North deals Nunvol, and the auction should go pass, pass, and South is going to open here, and some of you will have opened a club. So for those of you who opened a club, uh, it will continue one club, one heart, uh, one no trump, and you should play it in one no. And here, I don't think West is going to lead a club, so they're probably going to try a low spade, which doesn't really hurt you. Now, he, now, um, if you elect to open a no trump in the south hand, which is definitely a possibility, uh, even if you play 15 to 17 no trumps, most people do open good 14s, and this may qualify with the five card suit. Um, and if you couple that with being in third seat and on vulnerable, I think there's a lot of merit to a one no trump opener in the south. So if you do open a no trump, your partner is 4 triple 3 with an 8 count, which normally I would recommend passing this kind of a hand, but with three tens and really good spot cards, I think that you just have to invite your partner, because a lot of the times these hands just take more tricks than you expect them to. So if you do invite, then the auction will go a no trump, two clubs, two diamonds, two no trump, and uh, south of course will pass since they only have a 14 count. And on this auction, West is going to lead a club, which again is not really any skin off their back here. And in order to hold it to two, you have to get your... You have a, basically you have four tricks off the top. You have the Ace of Hearts, the King of Diamonds, the Ace of Diamonds, and the King of Clubs. And essentially what you have to do is you have to preserve enough cards in the red suits that whatever suit declare tries to set up the eighth trick in, uh, you have to continue attacking that suit, essentially. So first, the very first thing they're going to do is they're going to try to set up clubs. And if they set up clubs, then you can shift to a diamond, and your partner has to duck the ace of diamonds so that they have an entry back to their hand. So then Declare should never be able to get a heart trick if that happens. But let's say you don't manage to shift to a diamond when they knock out your club. Uh, you're still not dead in the water here. Uh, Declare has to try to establish a trick. So if they try to establish a diamond trick, uh, you sort of do the same thing. Uh, you let them have their diamond trick, but they won't ever get their heart trick. And if they try to establish a heart trick, then... Uh, then now they're wide open in hearts, so they won't ever be able to get their diamond trick. So I think that if you discard carefully, then you should really be able to hold it to two no trump. Uh, and on the clubs, I think, uh, unfortunately though, I think East's first pitch is going to be the deuce of diamonds, which because they don't have enough information on the hand to know that they're, they can pitch their spades safely. So I think that uh, if you we're in one no making three or defending one no making three, that's also going to be a relatively common result. All right, next board, board two. So this one's a little interesting, but not super interesting. So east deals and passes, south is going to open one spade, and it's going to go pass, and north is going to bid two no trump. Jacoby. And we actually play something a little different here. So, but for most of you who are, if you're just playing regular Jacoby, what you're going to do on this hand is you're going to bid three no trump. And if you recall, the three level bids, three clubs, three diamonds, and three hearts all show shortness, and four clubs, four diamonds, and four hearts all show good five fives. So now you have two bids available to you, which is three of your major and three no trump. And traditionally, both those bids show extras, and one of them shows more extras than the other one. So traditionally, rebidding your major is the better balanced hand, and rebidding three no is kind of like a very solid minimum, usually something like 14 to 16. Um, of Keep in mind, of course, that if you 
had a 16 count, you might have opened a no trump. So I think playing playing normally, you would just play that rebidding three no shows like a solid minimum, like th more like 13 to 14 really, since these days you tend to open a no trump with the 15, 16 counts. And therefore jumping to four spades would show a really bad hand, like in a 11 to 12 roughly. And with some partners, I might play that this denies two key cards as well. So anyway, so you bid three no trump, showing that medium-ish hand, and your partner has 15, but they have no reason to go on opposite that hand, so they should just bid a quiet four spades. And I always advocate not leading from kings in general, unless you have anything to suggest otherwise. So personally, from the west hand, I would have chosen a heart as the least of all evils. Um, if you lead a diamond, I think, or if you lead a club, then declare is going to make six. But if you lead a heart or a spade, I think that a declare is always going to lose one trick in the red suit and a club. So if you manage to hold it to five, that's basically about as well as you can legitimately do on defense. And in terms of the play, there's really not much to it. You draw trumps and set up your long suit, which is clubs. So now board three. Uh, south deals and opens one spade, and it should go pass. And I imagine that uh, if, if you're playing constructive raises, which means that for weaker spade raises, like maybe um, maybe four to six points with three spades, something like that, you would start with a semi-forcing no trump or a forcing no trump and then preference your partner to two spades so that your two spade bid really shows something like seven to ten, eight to ten really. But I think with the doubleton and the five card suit, uh, this qualifies as a constructive spade raise. So regardless of what you're playing, you're going to raise to two spades. And it's going to go pass, and South would like to make some sort of a game try. So depending on what you play, if you play help suit game tries, this is a perfect three club help suit game try, over which your partner should be happy to accept a help suit game try in clubs. And the, um, the fact that you have only six high card points is very deceptive. If your partner does make a help suit in clubs, then you have a fantastic hand. You have a side doubleton. Uh, your partner's probably short in hearts if they're making a side help suit in clubs, to be honest. And uh, you have all their, almost all their club losers covered, really. And so the only concern, you would like to have better trumps, but hopefully your partner has some good trumps over there to compensate. If you'll notice that uh, this hand plays very well but if you move the ace of spades from partner's hand and uh, shift it into the ace of clubs, so suddenly you have nine third opposite king jack empty fifth of spades, uh, you aren't going to have, you're only going to have one outside loser in hearts, but you're going to have to navigate that spade suit for only two losers, which is a lot less certain than if you take that ace of spades and put it in spades, now you can you can play this suit for uh, one loser is your goal at, in planning to lose a heart and a club. So I think that on the actual deal, it was a little bit lucky that four spades was such a good spot. And as it turns out, you can make five spades because the spade finesse is on side. So re regardless of whether you got to four spades or not, the play should go roughly similarly. They should probably will start the king of hearts and continue hearts, which you rough. And now your plan should really just to be to um, to take some roughs here. And so you try the ace, king of diamonds, and rough a diamond. And you can cross back to your hand in spades and rough an another diamond. And the question is, do you want to go all out here? Uh, and by all out, I mean take the spade finesse. So I think if you manage to get to four, um, then you are probably pretty happy with where you are, so you don't want to risk going down by taking the spade finesse. So I don't think you would do it in four. In three, it's kind of like a wash, you know? It's it's really just a 50% kind of thing. 
Um, I think that uh, you aren't really going to go down in three spades, no matter how you chuck it. So uh, you can, you're basically just competing against the other people in three spades, and so you can decide what you think. You know, maybe based on how your opponents seem. Like if your righty or seems really discouraged, they may have the queen of spades. You know, <laughs> but anyway. So I think uh, most people are going to be in three or four spades, making four or five, depending on how greedy you are. Alright, so next board. So um, West opens, and they, I believe they have a no trump opener, 4, 8, 10, 16 count. So they open a no trump, and North is going to come into the auction, and what they bid is going to depend on what you play here. So if you play something like Mechwell, uh, you have the ability to double to show a single suited miner at the two level. Uh, the question is, do you want to, or do you want to just jump to three clubs? And I think that there's a lot of merit to just jumping to three clubs here with the seven card club suit and the decent hand. And over a no trump, uh, jumping to three clubs is not the same as if you, as if you had opened three clubs or if your righty had opened and you bid three clubs, like if your righty opened a non one no trump bid. And I think that um, because they have already opened a strong no trump, this is a very dangerous auction here because your righty has a already announced a bunch of values and also um, while it's true that your lefty doesn't have a penalty double because most people play negative doubles here, if your lefty does double and your righty has nowhere to go, then chances are they're going to leave it in. So you can't really have a bad hand like you might for other preamps, uh, especially vulnerable over a no trump. Uh, the jump to the three level actually shows a pretty decent hand. It shows that if they double you, uh, you're not really expecting to go for a huge number or anything like that. So anyway, so you jump to three clubs and East has just a textbook negative double. And this is why we play negative doubles when they interfere both at the two level and the three level. Because if you did not have a negative double here, if your double was penalty, you would just be like, completely screwed and you'd probably just end up making a penalty double and who knows what happens if you do that, right? Like, I think, uh, I think that, well, s this hand, uh, is always going to get, um, seven club tricks, basically. I think that if you defend it perfectly, you can hold it to, uh, making only six because I think you can give yourself an uppercut. But basically, you would have to defend it perfectly. And if they do manage to collect all seven of their club tricks, then that's not compensating for your game, which is 620 or 650. They're only going for 500. So you recover by having a negative double here. So if you make a negative double, it's just going to go pass. And I think this hand can bid... can either bid three... They can bid three hearts, or um, if you want, you can bid four hearts if you feel that your partner has promised both majors with their negative double. Obviously, sometimes they're going to be a little stuck. So usually when you jump to four hearts, even you would like to have a fifth heart here. But if you feel like your hand is so good that you can't bear the fact of your partner passing you in three hearts, then you can elect to jump to uh, four hearts here. And so then your partner will pass and you they're going to lead the ace king of clubs and having nothing better to shift to uh they're actually probably going to shift to a trump because they don't want to give up the position in any suit and so when you start drawing trumps uh you're going to realize that the trumps are 4-1 and so then basically um you can, if you can tell uh, that the clubs are 7-2, uh, you can actually safely draw trumps and take all your finesses into the south hand, because you know that the south doesn't have any ways to get back to their partner. But if you can't tell this, uh, you can just take your finesses first. 
So you can take the spade finesse first, because that's there's only one way to take that, and you'll find that this is on side, and then you can take the diamond finesse, uh, whichever way you feel like taking it, uh, but as long as you preserve two trumps in each hand, you'll have enough entries to get back and forth to eventually draw all of South's trumps. So you sh depending on whether you get the diamond guess right or not, uh, you should either make four or five hearts. And as to whether you should get the diamond guess right, uh, well, if you can tell that North has seven clubs and one heart, and you're going to play a couple rounds of spades, I think, uh, to find out that they probably only have two spades, then I don't think there's any uh, vacant spaces argument for going either way. Like, what this means is that normally you might play the preemptor to not have the extra diamonds because you can see that they have more clubs in their hand, but as the hand plays out, you can tell also that South is being placed with four hearts and two clubs and four spades. So, you know, they have the same number of vacant spaces. You can probably tell at some point that the diamonds are 3-3, three, three, and then you have no reason to go one way or the other. Uh, depending on North's tendencies, uh, some people, for example, may not bid three clubs without the Queen of Diamonds, and some people uh, may not bid three clubs if they have the Queen of Diamonds. They may have try to show it as a stronger bid. So I think that uh, you should probably check your opponent's convention card and see if three clubs was the only way they could show clubs, or if they had a stronger way of showing clubs, and maybe go off that. But regardless, uh, you should be in four hearts making four or five. So board five, North deals and passes, and East has a one diamond opener, so they're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, South has a pass. Um, you may consider bidding two clubs on this hand, but when you're red and they're white, and especially when partner is the passed hand, so you know that you don't have a game, uh, you really need a good hand or a good reason to bid, and you definitely don't have a good hand, and you also don't have a good reason to bid, so you should just pass this hand. So a diamond pass, uh, one heart, pass, one spade, pass, and West should raise to two spades to let their partner know that they have a fit and are not completely broke. So two spades is not invitational, but it just says that, you know, you actually had a response, you didn't have a joke. You might pass one spade if you had a complete joke with nothing interesting in your hand. Pass, and I think that uh, West or East can envision a game opposite very little here, like the Queen of Spades and the King of Diamonds is going to be a pretty decent game. So I think they should just go ahead and bid it. Uh, there's not really that good of a way for you to find out whether a game is good, because your partner could have a bunch of points that are useless to you, or they could have very few points that are very useful to you. So so now you go ahead and bid four spades, and South is on lead, and South is not likely going to lead the Ace of Clubs, which is what you do need to lead to hold it to four. Uh, you can uh, cash your two clubs and then wait for your spade trick to hold it to four. But let's say South doesn't do that. South leads something else. Let's, let's say South tries a heart or even the seven of diamonds. Who knows? Anyway, so in this case, you should win this trick. And now you can draw two. You can unblock the diamond first. Sorry. And now you can draw two rounds of trumps, leaving only one trump outstanding. And then you can start playing on your diamonds. So you'll pitch a club on the ace of diamonds, and you'll play the queen of diamonds, and uh, south is going to show up, but they're going to have no more trumps, so they can't rough, so you pitch another club. Then you play the jack of diamonds, and you pitch another club. And north, sadly, has to follow to all these. So eventually, now that you've pitched all the clubs, now you can keep cashing your diamonds, and eventually north all just gets their high trump. Uh, and you can rough your two club losers in the dummy. So drawing two rounds of trumps is very important here. Um, you really want to extract your opponent's trumps and then let them take their 
high Trump whenever they feel like it. So I think uh, if your opponents found the miraculous Ace of Clubs lead, then they did very well against you for sure. But if you got to game, it looks like you also did pretty well in this field. So the next board, uh, East deals and opens one spade, South passes, West plans to give a three card limit raise, so they've been a no trump, North passes, and uh, if you were thinking about overcalling two clubs on this hand, uh, you, in this, when the opponents are both bidding again, you really want to have either a good hand or a good reason to bid. And again, you have neither. You don't need to be in this auction, and you definitely don't have a good hand. You have some points, like you have 14 points, but like your hand is just kind of icky. Uh, if your opponents are the type that frequently like to steal from you, uh, which is not that common when they're vulnerable and you're not, then maybe you can chance a two club over call. But really, with length in the with length and strength in the spade suit, I would just pass. Anyway, so now this person bids two clubs, and you're like, okay, thank God I didn't bid. <laughs> and south passes, west bids three spades, and east bids game. And now I think uh, most souths are just going to lead a heart here from their five card holding. And you have a few different things that you could try to do on this hand. So clearly you have that singleton. Uh, you can try to rough some stuff. Um, the diamonds may the fourth diamond may be good for a trick. Uh, and you maybe want to try to take a double finesse in spades to pick up spades. So you know, you, like I said, you have a lot of options for what you can do. Um, I think that a totally reasonable line is to try to rough some clubs and then try to split trumps. So if you do embark on this line, now you are on the dummy, so you can, uh, the question is, should you take the club finesse or not? Um, you, if you count uh, your transportation, so let's say they lead a heart and you win, okay? So let's say you play a club to the ace and rough a club, okay? Now you can play a diamond to the king and rough a club, and you can now rough a heart and rough a club. Uh, but if you were planning to do these things, by the way, uh, you should cash the ace of clubs first because uh, your trump is your trumps are going to be a little touch and go at this point. So then uh, you want to make sure that you get all the tricks. Uh, so basically, what you do, so if you want to forego the club finesse, so what you should do is win the ace, club to the ace, or, and rough a club, right? So then uh, you cross in diamonds, rough a club. Uh, at some point, you may want to cash the ace of diamonds so that no one can pitch anything. And then you can rough a heart, and rough a club, and rough a heart. And uh, so now at this point, uh, you've roughed three on the dummy, and you have these two aces. So dummy has provided you with five tricks. And in your hand, you have the ace of clubs, the king of diamonds, and you've roughed twice. So in your hand, you have four tricks, and you have the ace of spades, which is guaranteed to be a trick. So you've made your contract already. So I think this is a very good line if you are playing imps. Uh, if you're playing match points, uh, it may be better to try something else. But, you know, it's a totally reasonable line. Uh, if, you, if you do take a club finesse, that means that you have to rough one fewer spade, so or one fewer club, so now I think that you have the timing to split trumps, and eventually um, you can... Uh, You can, uh, well, actually, I think that the, sorry, I think that the real way to make five, actually, you have to pick up the spades, so you, I think all you do is if you just rough one club, and then you set up the fourth diamond for your uh, 11th trick there. But, I mean, that's kind of tough, I think. Uh, looking at all the hands, you know how to play it, but just at the table, I think making four would be good enough. 
Uh, I think uh, it looks like a lot of people who are in it did fall into making five for whatever reason. So next board, board seven, South deals and uh, has a one no trump opener and this is going to go all pass. And um, yeah, so I think that uh, West has a normal spade lead, which is great for East because East has almost all the defensive tricks. So they lead a spade uh, around to the 10 holding, I think, and East looking at the dummy uh, can see that they don't really have anything that they can play that well. And uh, as it turns out, um, so they're always going to get their three spades and one heart and one club for making two. Uh, and uh, if if North is declaring, actually, then East is going to be end played at trick one, and so they're never going to get that third spade. And I think that uh, you're, you're really just going to kind of fall into making two or making three, depending on which side you played it from, uh, which is you know, everyone's going to play it from the south side. Uh, as long as you don't do anything silly like lead the king of clubs out of hand. Uh, Dummy, I think, has enough entries that you can do stuff back and forth. So as long as you're a little careful with the timing, you should be able to make two. Alright, board eight. West steals and passes. And uh, North has a 10 count, and I think that um, even if you open aggressively in standard, I don't think you need to open this hand uh, with only 10 high card points and kind of weak texture in your suits. So you pass, and East opens a diamond, South passes, uh, West can bid a no trump, or if you, if you don't play inverted minors, you can bid two diamonds as a diamond race. Uh, whatever the case, North will make a takeout double of diamonds and uh, East either passes or if their partner bid a no trump they might actually try two diamonds because they really don't want to play a no trump doubled if that ends up there and uh, South is going to bid two hearts and one of East or West is going to compete to uh, three diamonds and I don't think North South either of them are really going to find a compete to three hearts um, if anyone, then it would be North. Uh, so I don't think I don't think you should bid again because uh, as a past hand, once you make your takeout double, you kind of already described your hand. But um, certainly the most common results here are going to be three diamonds or three hearts. And uh, three diamonds is cold and three hearts is down one. But if you are in three hearts, the key to the hand is going to be playing the spade suit and it's going to be hard for you to um, figure out how to play the spade suit. Although on most auctions, I think that uh, you should be able to guess. Um, so basically, uh, playing the spade suit, the key is to figure out which hand is likely to have ace and one, uh, because you have no spade spots, right? So if east has ace and one, what you need to do is you need to lead a spade from the dummy to your hand and then duck a spade. And if West has it, then you have to do the opposite, a spade to the queen and then duck a spade. And I think that uh, you can actually get the spade suit right since uh, West is didn't bid a spade over a diamond, so East cannot possibly have ace and one. So I think that uh, if you are in three hearts, then you should probably go down one. Uh, but uh, probably a pretty normal result is to be in three diamonds, making three. Alright, board nine. Uh, so I believe this board uh, we did not actually play, so I'll do my best here. So North deals, 8, 10, 13 count, so they open a diamond. Pass, South bids a spade. Uh, this hand has no bid. Um, North, depending on your partnership of agreements, you might rebid one no trump. Uh, or you might rebid two clubs, just depending on your style, both are fine. Pass, and uh, South is going to probably try two spades. And uh, then West is on lead, so they have a normal jack of 
hearts lead and north you can cover or not cover doesn't really matter uh, but then you win and I think that your goal here is you just want to get the trumps out you don't want any like roughs or things like that so I think you should play, just play ace of spades and a spade and um, now the way that the uh, the spots are here um, in clubs the spots are such that if you are a double dummy about the hands you can actually pick up the club suit for no losers and for tricks so so east west need to shift to a diamond at some point so basically you're gonna play ace of spades and a spade and west may continue a heart uh, but at some point one of them needs to shift to a diamond because otherwise what you can do is once the trumps are out uh, you can lead the ten of clubs so let's say you lead the ten of clubs and um, it goes king ace and now you cash the queen of clubs and the nine drops so now you cross back to your hand and finesse a club to the six uh, now if west doesn't cover then you run the ten of clubs play a club to the jack cross back to your hand and a club to the queen again for four tricks now of course doing this requires some pretty double dummy stuff so if you don't shift to a diamond you may find that your opponent still only made three spades but uh, legitimately you do have to shift to a diamond alright next board again we did not play this one so east passes pass um, west might try a third seat opener uh, they could open a diamond. So if they do open a diamond, then north doubles, um, east bids one heart, south passes, west should probably just pass this because they don't want to be doing anything crazy here, and north bids one spade, and east probably doesn't have anything to say, south has not quite enough to raise just a one spade bid, I think. Uh, if your partner jumped to two spades, I think you would bid, but uh, just double and one spade showing something like 17 to 19 points and five spades I don't think you quite have enough to want to be in game so you can just pass and West has nothing to say so I think um, playing one spade in the north should not be all that uncommon uh, if you pass the west hand and north opens a spade pass pass now west makes a takeout double and you should actually wander into two spades. And let's see what happens in spades. So you are going to have one heart loser, no spade losers, three diamond losers, and one club loser for making one. And so all you have to do is just make sure that you get all your tricks. And the tricks don't go anywhere. So, um,. What you, what you need to do is you have to lead a club at some point so you can grab your club trick just in case uh, you, can, you might be able to set up the queen of hearts since the hearts are king third. Uh, and then you just need to make sure that at some point uh, you do cash your three diamonds and then lead a heart from the east side before, well, I mean, not before anything, really. So I think... Uh, you should be able to hold this contract at two spades. Alright, so now we're back to interesting boards that we actually played. So, South has 18 points, so they open a club, pass, and North should bid an inverted two clubs if that's what you play. Uh, the reason that it's right to bid clubs instead of diamonds here even though you would like to have five clubs if you bid diamonds and then support your partner's clubs later they're going to assume that you're five diamonds four clubs usually um, which you're not so you don't want to give them this false impression and when your partner opens a standard club you always know that your club fit is going to be better than your diamond fit uh, at the very worst they're both going to be four three as it is on this deal anyway so you bid an inverted two clubs and it goes pass and uh, now it sort of depends on what your agreements are uh, so if you don't play anything special like you play that 2 no is non-forcing and 3 no is just an acceptance of a game invite uh, then 
I think that uh, if you play that, then Forno by the south hand should really just be quantitative, showing like the 18 to 19, uh, which I think north should probably pass. Um, now, a lot of people do play that uh, that two no is forcing, and so a jump to three no can show the 18 to 19 balanced. So if they do that, then north should probably make a quantitative slam try with a uh, four no trump, and now south only has an 18 count, so they should pass as well. Um, and the reason that uh, north should pass a quantitative invite by south is that they just have like a really gross looking hand. Like they have 14 high cards, but it's like so gross. So I think that uh, you, you just kind of go low because you're not entirely sure where your partner is going to get their tricks anyway. Um, and having the f your four card suit be diamonds is not good because like your partner, you know, is almost never going to have four diamonds on this hand. So you're not really going to have diamonds be a guaranteed source of tricks. Uh, and um, yeah, so six no trump is on a spade finesse and a diamond break, so it's obviously not a good contract and uh, you shouldn't be there. But aside from that, there's basically nothing to the play. Drive out the queen, the ace of diamonds and take a spade finesse. All right, board 12. So West deals and North opens one heart and um, East East uh, may pass, or they might actually stick in a two-club overcall. And this two-club overcall, I really don't mind because you're white on red and you have a pretty good club suit. So I don't mind just sticking your neck in there when you're white on red. But when you're vulnerable, or even sometimes if you're equal vol, then um, you have to be a little more careful. But uh, now if East does bid two clubs, then I think uh, South can try two diamonds, and uh, north will raise to three diamonds, and this will go all pass. And if they don't bid two clubs, south will bid a semi-forcing no trump, and now north will bid two diamonds, and south will raise to three diamonds, and north will pass again. So I think that uh, unless you play something silly like the Flannery Convention, uh, you're going to end up in some number of diamonds, probably three of them. Uh, but uh, we actually ended up in two spades because um, because of that aforementioned convention. And uh, when you're in diamonds, uh, there's not that much to the play. Uh, you're going to get one pitch in hearts, and uh, you're going to get one pitch in spades, and you can just try to rough as many clubs as uh, the hand is really going to allow you to do. So I think that a lot of people are going to make five on this deal. Um, yeah. All right, board 13. So North deals and has a 10 count, so they pass. And East passes and South opens one heart. And it goes, uh, I think um, if this person wants to do something like make a takeout double, they can. Uh, I definitely would not bid two diamonds. Uh, again, because you have a very weak suit and you're vulnerable and your partner's a passed hand. But if you want to try to make an aggressive takeout double, that's okay. But I think pass is a totally reasonable call. And uh, now north bids one spade, goes pass, and south can jump to three spades now. And north should bid four spades. And in four spades, there's really nothing to the play. Um, draw trumps and take a hard finesse, essentially. And since... The um, it's stiff king, but I mean you're not gonna know that, right? So you're probably gonna just make four hearts or four spades. All right, next board. Uh, so east deals and passes, and south passes, and west is gonna open one diamond. And now I think North has a pretty normal two spade bid. Um, again, when your partner's a passed hand, uh, your bids can be a little more wide ranging, but I think that uh, even, even if your partner was not a passed hand, you can still bid two spades. And bidding two spades is not all just gonna show like garbage, you know, like it shows like some hand uh, to be making a weak jump over call when uh, 
when the opponents have opened. So I think this is just a normal two spade bid. Uh, this hand is also very hard to describe if you bid one spade because uh, you would like to bid again but you don't want to show that you have a lot of stuff. So two spades and I think this person can just uh, can either make a negative double um, or if they feel like their hand is like bad and they don't want to make a negative double they should at least try three diamonds. But I think you have just barely enough in conjunction with the diamond fit that you can make a negative double over two spades. And south should bid three spades. And um, west should bid four clubs, I think. And um, if you, or if they, if their partner did elect to make a negative double, I think west has enough that they can just jump to five clubs, play there, and uh, offer a choice of games here. If for some reason you decided to pass the east hand, now west bids four clubs, uh, north passes, and I think uh, east has just too much to not jump to five diamonds here. So in any case, I think that uh, the east-west hands should get to five diamonds. And this kind of hand, again, the play is nothing. Uh, you draw two rounds of trumps, and then you rough out your clubs, basically. Oh, there's only oh there's one other caveat um, which I did hear about at some tables, which is uh, that the south hand opened one heart, uh, which I think is totally fine. In fact, I would have opened one heart. Uh, but if so, if you do open one heart, now west can jump to two no trump to show both the minors, and uh, north should probably bid three hearts. Um, which is the worst of their two raises. So they have some hands, but they don't have like the best hand really. Um, and keep in mind that bidding three hearts here, it's not like one heart past two hearts. It actually does show a decent hand, just not as good as if you had a cubid their minor. So over three hearts, I think um, East can visualize the heart shortness in their partner's hand. Uh, and also they have four cards support. So I don't think they have quite the right kind of hand to jump to five diamonds, but they can definitely throw in a four diamond bid. And uh, south should probably pass. And uh, I think uh, if their partner bids four diamonds, west you know, can again envision game opposite the ace of diamonds and like a doubleton club, so they should bid five diamonds. And I think uh, north south should just be careful to not double this contract because uh, neither of you are sure that you're beating it, really. All right, board 15. So South deals, and here South has a 14 count balanced with honors and all the suits and a six card minor. And so this is a textbook one no Trump opener. Like, you know, I don't care like what kind of tenets you subscribe to, but if you have 14 count with a six card minor and you don't have a hand where you can bid one minor three minor, which is often the case is when you have a 14 count, then the best way to describe your hand in terms of playing strength is just to open a no trump. So you open a no trump and um, West uh, should probably show the majors. Uh, they probably wouldn't if they were vulnerable, but since they are not vulnerable, then they will. And if you have the ability to, uh, East should ask which major is longer, like if you play two clubs for both majors. But if you don't play that, uh, you're probably just going to end up in two hearts. Um, and uh, in two hearts, um, there's not really that much to do. I mean, you're going to draw trumps, and then you're going to take a spade finesse and try to run your spades. And the way the hands are, um, because the layout is quite friendly, uh, you, you can actually uh, draw all the trumps, basically. Uh, but you don't know that. So I think that it's pretty normal to that for North to get a trump trick here. Uh, so, so anyway, so regardless of what you do, you're going to lose a diamond and you're going to lose a spade and you're going to lose a club and you're probably going to lose a trump trick. 
Um, and I think that you can finagle your way out of uh, losing a second club, or I think if you time it well, then I don't think you, you may not have to lose a trump trick to the north hand. Uh, but obviously spades plays much easier here, um, and I think that uh, you will probably end up making three spades for similar reasons. Alright, board 16. So this is actually quite an interesting hand. Um, this, this hand illustrates a good point, which is that uh, um, you should never really fall into uh, like a pattern and you should just double check the hand. Uh, so west opens one heart and north should probably overcall two clubs. It's a little light, but you are white on red and you're five four two two and uh, king queen jack. So what what do you want? right? And uh, east makes a negative double, and south should raise to three clubs, and I don't think anyone has a bid over this. So now a totally normal lead from the east hand is the king of hearts. Your partner opened a heart, you try to get some roughs. Unfortunately, it does not work out well on this deal. Uh, king of hearts, low, low ace. And so now, um, as the declare, you should be thinking about what you want to do on this hand, and I think a automatic instinct is that you think, oh, I want to rough some some spades. But if you look at your spades, actually, you have 10, 9, 4th, opposite jack and 1. Uh, so after the first three spades, your fourth spade is just going to be good. Um, so then what you want to think is, well, does trying to rough uh, the spades hurt me at all? And the answer to that question is yes, definitely. Because if you play some spades, now they'll be able to play hearts. And here you got a very favorable king of hearts lead, right? So now your jack is good and your queen of hearts will be good for your diamond loser later on. But if you try to play on spades and now they get to play on hearts and give their partner like potential heart roughs, now your queen of hearts is no longer good. So I think honestly the best plan on this hand uh, is to win the heart and just set about drawing trumps because, you know, it's not clear that you're going to be able to rough spades profitably. Uh, in order to rough spades profitably, uh, you would have to not lose a single spade, or not lose, uh, basically you would have to lose two spades and not the other two. So you'd have to rough both your spades before your spade roughs become profitable. And keep in mind that the spades are likely to be 4-3, so your righty's just probably roughing that other spade over you anyway. So, you know, it's actually a a trick, like thinking that this is going to give you, you know, extra tricks. Um, so anyway, so you try to uh, draw trumps, you play like a high trump and they win the ace. And uh, West actually has a little bit of a problem. Um, this is kind of a complex signaling situation. So they have a few things that they want to do, right? Um, so. If their partner has a stiff heart, they want to play a heart. Uh, if their partner has a doubleton heart and the king of diamonds, they want to play a diamond because um, they want to take away the dummy entry before uh, the hearts get unblocked. And so the way to do this, this is a very complex signaling situation, is to find out whether your partner has a singleton heart or not, um, you're going to lead a high card in like the suit that you have, basically. So the reason this is so complex is because there's multiple suits in play and none of them are the suit that you lead. So I'll show you how this works. So what you do is you lead the king of spades, okay? And this is, declare is going to play low. And now your partner has a number of uh, signals to give you. So let's say you're playing upside down carding, okay? So what uh, your partner is going to do here is, this one is pretty normal. They're going to discourage what you play uh, if they have a singleton heart and they want you to give them a rough. Um, now, normally, though, they would encourage what you play if they don't have a singleton heart and they, you know, they like what you're, what you're playing, right? But you can see at the looking at the dummy, that you don't have a lot of tricks coming to you in spades. So really what 
an encouraging spade here should mean is in conjunction with not having a singleton heart, uh, perhaps like, you know, a diamond shift is going to be okay here. Uh, because if you play the do, if you discourage, your partner is going to try to give you a heart rough because discouraging the spade here shows that um, you you have a singleton heart, basically. But uh, if you encourage the spade, um, your partner should be able to see that there's not that much future in spades. And now they know that you have a doubleton heart, so they can maybe work out to shift to a diamond. And notice that if they do shift to a diamond, you take away dummy's entry. Uh, so Declara can go about drawing trumps, but they eventually will have to lose three spades and a diamond and a club for down one. Uh, and notice that Declara couldn't unblock the Jack of Hearts first, because if they did that, when West got in with the Ace of Clubs, they could play a heart through to try to promote a trick for their partner, essentially. Uh, and then, you know, if you pitch on this trick, then now they can cross in spades and do the exact same thing. So it's way too dangerous to unblock the heart. Basically, you just uh, draw trumps and hope that your opponents can't find the diamond shift. All right, next board, board 17. So north deals and passes, east passes, south passes. So I guess west has the good hand, uh, pretty good hand here. Um, so 8, 10, 14, 18, God, I can't even count that high. So uh, 22 high curve points. And so they're gonna open two clubs and north passes and east probably bids two diamonds and um, now, I think uh, some Souths might chance a, a lead directing double. Personally, I would not, because I would think that at the two level, you would have to have a longer suit or a better hand, because sometimes it does just go redouble, and then you're pretty sad if you, this is what you have. Um, and West re will bid two no trump, and I think uh, East can try stamen, or they can just bid three no, um, with the four triple three shape, but whatever the case, you are going to end up in three no trump. And north has to lead here. And if the, your partner doubled for a diamond lead, then you are going to lead a diamond. But um, if they bid stamen, though, uh, you know, two no, three clubs, three spades, three no, um, you may also find a diamond lead because you now you know they have hearts and spades. But at our table, they actually just bid 2 no, 3 no. So now a diamond was basically out of the picture, and so I led the ace of spades. Um, so if you do lead a diamond, you'll hold it to 4, I think. But if you lead the eight of spades, uh, because both heart honors on side, they'll be able to get two hearts, five clubs, a diamond, and four spades for making 12 tricks. All right, uh, now this board. Uh, there's actually a committee about this board here. Um, so anyway, east deals and passes, south passes, and west is going to open, uh, and west will open one club at most tables. And now north has kind of an interesting hand. Um, so they are red on white. So some people would play that a jump to three spades is going to show roughly this kind of hand. And I'm of that kind of school where if you're red on white and you jump, then you have a pretty decent hand. Um, but uh, that's not actually standard for most people. So let's say that you just decide to start with one spade. Uh, and uh, East can either bid a passed hand two hearts, or if they determine that their hand is not even enough for a passed hand two hearts, they can try a negative double. Uh, and uh, South should give a constructive spade raise if they have one, or just a normal spade raise. Uh, and West is going to bid X number of hearts, depending on how low they can bid them. And uh, I think over a spade raise, uh, the North hand has seven spades, obviously, and a void, and it's one of those hands where you can't really tell if how good game is going to be, so they should just jump to four spades. And I don't think that um, either, like, I don't think either East or West really has a double of this. And when you're trying to decide, 
you know, whether you're going to double the opponents when you feel like you have the balance of the points, just try to think of if you are actually protecting something or not. So here, um, with West being a minimum opener and East being a passed hand, uh, I don't think that you are really expecting to be making four hearts, even if the auction timed such that you managed to be in it. So I think that um, you don't really want to be doubling four spades here because, again, neither of you have any expectation that you're making a game. So in that case, you know, you don't have anything to protect. Um, and in four spades, uh, so if they lead a diamond, then four spades is strictly on the spade finesse. And if they don't lead a diamond, then all you need is one of two black suit finesses. Um, and actually, um, the play was a little interesting at my table. Not super interesting, but so uh, they actually opened a weak no trump. And so my plan was to show one major and then jump in spades to show an invitational spade hand. Uh, but the auction timed such that I did bid four spades. Partner showed some values, so I bid four spades. And they didn't lead a diamond, they led a heart, and they led the deuce of hearts. So I went up with the ace, pitching a diamond, and now I played the ten of spades, and uh, then played another round of spades, so all the trumps were gone. And so this kind of situation, uh, it's very easy sometimes to just, you know, fall into like, okay, well, the hand's over, I just need to take a club finesse. Um, but this is an example of something which is never give up. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes definitely the opponents can go wrong. So here I exited a diamond, um, which West won with the jack, and, you know, they didn't know exactly what was going on, but they figured a heart return was going to be safe. Um, oh, by the way, at trick one, uh, West played the ten of hearts to try to give their partner suit preference for diamonds, which I noticed, but I don't think their partner did. <laughs> and so they played a heart back, and so I pitched my other losing diamond here, and uh, East won in honor. And now they were in, and they weren't really sure what to play. And so if you're ever in this situation where Declare has now pitched two diamonds on various things, then I guarantee you a diamond return will be safe. But uh, they, you know, they could tell that a heart was not going to set up a heart trick. Uh, so they played a heart, and now it went uh, nine queen, and I roughed. And now I started running my trumps. So now um, the way that the dummy is, the... the nine or eight of hearts is left on the dummy and uh, West only has a small heart and so and then I had ace third of clubs opposite King Jack third and so now because East is guarding both the heart and the club they were actually legitimately squeezed in the round suits um, so the moral of the story is that uh, cash your tricks that's and never give up <laughs> uh, which uh, we weren't doubled so we didn't get like the best score <laughs> All right, so now board 19. So again, uh, South deals and has 14 points, honors in all the suits, and, you know, a six-card minor. So again, you know, this is just a textbook one no-trump opener to me. Uh, and I think that if you don't open a no-trump on these hands, you really should add that to your repertoire because uh, it's just so much better because your hand, like, when you open one club and rebid two clubs, your partner is not going to think you have this much, and you definitely don't have enough to bid one three. So, uh, so south, but like we'll say, let's say you open a club, uh, west bids a spade, uh, north makes a negative double, um, east passes, I guess, uh, south bids two clubs, west bids two spades, uh, and this goes all pass. If you do open a no trump, west should... Um, show their six card major and eventually I mean you're gonna end up in two spades and North is probably gonna lead their singleton club and when you get in with the king of clubs um, you can very you can tell from your hand because you have the nine of clubs that the ten of clubs is either a singleton or a doubleton so you can tell for a fact that um, West is going to need to rough some clubs and dummy. So even though it looks weird to shift to a trump from queen and one, uh, you should just shift to a low trump from queen and one. And doing this is going to hold it to two spades, um, 
basically uh, declare is going to be able to rough one club and then they're just going to lose uh, so they're going to lose their four clubs and the one spade basically kind of nothing to it and I think that um, the reason it always makes two even on a trump lead is that you can probably uh, squeeze and play south into giving you a club trick or something like that uh, I could be wrong, it could be a different way of making it, but uh, that seems pretty reasonable to me. Alright, board 20. Uh, okay, we're getting there. So, West deals and passes, and North opens a club, and um, East, I think personally, I, I would just overcall a heart on this hand, because um, I think that uh, you just have a little too much to not act here. And uh, if you do bid a heart on this hand, then south is going to pass, and uh, west is going to bid two hearts, and now north has no bid, so you actually buy the hand in two hearts, um, which happened at a few tables, if you can see. Um, but if for whatever reason you decide to pass on this hand, uh, south is going to pass, and west is going to bid one spade, and now north has a normal takeout double, uh, and I think east is can... Uh, I think that uh, the best thing for East to do right now is that since their partner is a passed hand and they don't really have game aspirations, uh, even though they have limit raise values that they should not give a limit raise, that they should just jump to three spades to try to, you know, screw the opponents out of the auction, basically. Uh, basically, uh, if you think about your bids, uh, your bids have to have a point to them, right? So uh, if you give a limit raise to your partner, the point of your bid is to let your partner know that you have a good hand so that maybe you can bid a game. But you know that you don't want to be in game really because you have a 10 count and your partner is a passed hand. So here um, you just want to put yourself at the level that you're willing to compete to. So if you do bid three spades here, um, I don't think south is going to bid and you'll actually buy the contract in three spades and you'll, make, you'll probably make it, I think. Uh, well, you might you might go down if you uh, misguess the spade suit. But now, um, so if you do give a limit raise, now South can throw in a three club bid, which they definitely should do because they have a maximum for their past hand with four card club support. And now, uh, when you compete to three spades, uh, I think North is just like, well, I don't know what's making. They're gonna bid four clubs, which is gonna drift. Uh, down one most of the time, I think. In order to beat it two, what you need to do is you need to get your diamond rough, um, and then you need to not underlead your heart. Um, but I don't think very many people managed that. So I think the pretty normal result is something like four clubs down one. Um, and the only thing that I would say is that a play, the play might go like this. A spade lead to the low jack and low, and now they might play a spade back and declare roughs, and now declare might draw trumps in two rounds and play a diamond out of hand. And so here, it may be reflexively, you may be ducking this trick, but then you have to think of what is declare's diamond holding, that they're leading a diamond out of hand towards the 10-9. And you can probably guess that if your partner had the queen um, and declare had the king, jack, let's say, uh, then you can see that Declare has entries to the board to play the diamonds from the dummy. So they probably don't have that holding. So they probably have a holding, really, where they don't really care which hand they're leading diamonds from, which means that your partner has either the king or they have nothing. And you can also see that um, if your partner wins the king and plays another spade, that when Declare roughs and plays a diamond, you're going to be end played into leading away from your heart or giving them a rough and slough. So if Declare does lead a diamond out of their hand towards the 10 9 fourth, uh, you should be alert enough to actually go up with your ace and take yourself off the end play. All right, so the next board. This hand is actually very interesting. So North deals and passes, and uh, East passes, and uh, South uh, may try a third seat one club opener, um, or they may pass, being vulnerable against not. 
Uh, but so let's talk about the auction if they do pass because it's going to be hard to get to clubs if they open a club. So now in the DC area, as you know, uh, we tend to open a spade on these hands and uh, f figure out our club fit later. Um, so, but like let's let's go. Well, go over both auctions real quick. So let's say you open one club on this hand, and North passes, and East bids one heart and uh, south passes and now you have a good enough hand I think that you can jump to two spades uh, showing at least 5-4 in a game forcing hand and uh, this hand passes and uh, this hand um, now should bid three clubs to say hey I have some club support and remember you're in a game force so you don't have to worry about underbidding your hand or not um, we'll ignore the opponents, they pass, okay? So now that, uh, now that this hand has bid three clubs, showing this, now you can continue with three spades to show the 6-5 shape, okay? And um, so now you've shown 6-5 and a game force, because if you had just a minimum 6-5, you would rebid one spade instead of two spades. And now over a 6-5 game force, um, I think this hand is, is quite good um, they can, um, continue with, um, let's see, what can they do? I think, uh, they, they can continue with perhaps, uh, four clubs, something like that. Uh, at some point you probably want a bid key card. Uh, I don't think that the auction is going to time well, that you're going to be able to bid exclusion. So this hand is going to find out that their partner has one key card, but I think it's reasonable to assume that their partner has the ace of hearts rather than the king of clubs. And even if they don't have the ace of hearts, uh, you still have a diamond loser to deal with. So I think a pretty normal thing to do is to get to six clubs. Um, and in six clubs, um, you should probably play a low club out of hand so that uh, you still get to rough both your spades even if it's king ten third in the north hand. Um, now it's not a hundred percent clear if that's the way to do it because you are playing match points and um, leading the jack of clubs is going to pick up king ten third in the south hand. So you know it's just it's a combination of like where you think the long clubs are going to be. I mean, most of the time it's not really going to matter if the clubs are 2-1. It doesn't matter which club you lead out of hand. Um, so let's say you do open a spade and partner is going to bid no trump. Now you can bid three clubs. And um, it's not really my style here. Like I don't like to just bid three no unless I have both the other suits very well stopped. Um, so here, honestly, um, I might, uh, I might try something like three hearts to say that, uh, usually three hearts in this auction would show five hearts, but I think that because I have the secondary club fit, if partner can't bid three no over three hearts, then I'm happy to back into clubs. Um, so over three hearts, I think, um, this hand might try four clubs at this point to say, hey, like, you know, like, I have a good hand, I have extra clubs, whatever, uh, and now this hand uh, should make some sort of a slam move. Anyway, regardless of the auction, you should get to six clubs. Um, and uh, the only thing of note is that you, if you do get to seven clubs, then you can tell that you need the club finesse to work, so you should just take it at some point early on, um, and this time you should lead the jack of clubs because you want to be able to pick up king ten third because if it's king ten third offside, you're going to go down anyway. So like, might as well, you know, like try to pick up the club suit for like actually making it. All right, board 22. So east deals and passes, south passes. And uh, West has a 14 count, opens one spade. And uh, North, I think, has a pretty normal takeout double. And it's a little weird because you're four triple three with King Jack third of spades, but you don't have enough to bid a no trump. And um, you really want to have some say in the auction. So if your partner has a suit, you want your partner to bid it. So North doubles, and um, 
if East has some sort of a weak spade raise, they can go ahead and make it. Uh, I personally would not raise to three spades if that's what your weak raise is, because you're vulnerable and you're four triple three. Um, but if you can bid a non-constructive two spades, I think you should. Anyway, South bids three hearts, uh, West passes, and North should pass here, and this should go all pass. And uh, West has a little bit of a tough lead here. Um, so uh, they might try a diamonds or they might try a trump. Um, but regardless, uh, and when the smoke clears, uh, you should be able to get two clubs, a diamond, and a spade. Um, and now at our table, um, I made kind of an undisciplined bid. Uh, my partner bid three hearts, and so I just decided I was four triple three with what looked like a double spade stopper. So I decided to just give three no a shot, which my partner pulled to four hearts. And um, they actually found a very good lead against us. They led the ace of clubs. Uh, and I think this is more called for on, on our auction, because when I did bid three no, uh, I'm representing a lot more values than I have. So he would expect the king of clubs to be in my hand more likely. So ace of clubs, queen of clubs. And now, as you can see, this contract is booked for down one. Um, so my partner drew trumps and having nothing better to do, just exited a club to the west hand. And um, this is where West actually fell from grace here. Uh, he decided that um, uh, he might as well try to be a little sneaky and see if they could get two spade tricks. Uh, and so he actually underled his ace of spades at this point. And um, this is a pretty valiant effort. Um, and the reason that you might do this is that you can see that you have the king of diamonds. So the diamond finesse is probably on side if they have it, if they have the queen jack, whatever. You know, so um, this is a pretty decent effort. Um, the main problem with this play is that you already didn't lead a spade at trick one. Um, so if you had like queen fifth of spades, for example, you would probably lead a spade in preference to from your ace queen jack of clubs. So in general, um, if the opponents have bid and raised a suit and they don't lead it, it usually means that the opening leader has the ace. So I think that um, declare should not go wrong even if they have a doubleton spade on this hand. Um, so yeah, and then uh, at this, after this point, you just take the percentage play in diamonds, which is going to be the double finesse through the opening bidder. All right, board 23. Uh, so south deals, and um, south is going to open one heart, and uh, west passes, and north bids one no trump, and uh, east passes. They don't really have anything to bid, even though they have 15 highs. And south bids two hearts, uh, and uh, North bids three hearts, and uh, South is probably going to pass this since they only have 11 high card points and uh, don't have that great of a hand. Um, I think it's pretty close to an accept, but not quite there. Um, but uh, because of the uh, favorable club and heart positions, you are going to make four. So I think uh, three hearts making four should be a pretty pretty normal result here. Um, and uh, yeah, um, at our table we had a pretty uh, pretty funny result. Uh, the auction started the same up until my partner bid two hearts and now West balanced with three diamonds, which I strongly do not recommend you do this because uh, you have like no hand, so, and uh, the opponents have not admitted to a fit yet also, so you never know, like, I mean, North could just have like ace, king, jack, ten fifth of diamonds and just double you. Um, and so I had a really big problem over three diamonds uh, because I didn't think three hearts by me was going to be um, an invitational bid anymore. Um, so I thought about a lot of things, including double, because this is a ridiculous bid, three hearts going low, four hearts going high. Um, and, you know, I thought about this for at least like a minute and a half. And finally, I decided uh, that uh, I was four triple three, and partner basically always has a bad hand. So I just bid three hearts. And um, East continued with three no trump. And I think that if their partner had bid 
um, three diamonds followed by like three hearts, you know, or followed by pass even. Uh, I think East has a pretty normal three no bid because uh, they have like a super huge hand. I mean, they have like the best hand at the table, right? And you're not really expecting your partner to be joking so much. Uh, but once your right hand opponent takes almost two minutes to make a bid, then you can probably guess that your right hand opponent was considering um, maybe going after three diamonds and like maybe doing something more. So now I think you can really sense that your partner is being a bit of a clown on this hand and just pass out three hearts. All right, so uh, the next board, West deals and passes. Um, and uh, the North hand, even though you have a semi-balanced 20 count, it feels a little gross to open two no trump on this hand. So you open a heart and um, East will probably preempt to three diamonds. And South has just enough that they can bid three hearts and uh, West passes. And if you want, you can make an aggressive four club cubid. And uh, the four club cubid is definitely extremely aggressive. Basically, the hand that you're playing your partner for, that you're hoping for, is the ace, king of spades, and a singleton diamond, um, which is not impossible, but, uh, you know, it's very improbable. So, you know, if you just want to bid four hearts, that's totally fine, too. Um, whatever happens, um, you are just going to end up in four hearts. They're going to cash the ace, king of diamonds, and then this guy's going to wait for their spade trick for making four so uh, basically a flat board, uh, uh, completely flat board, in fact, everyone did this. All right, board 25. So, um, so we've had this discussion about opening a no trump with 14 high card points and a six card minor. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to like advocate that you do it on this hand, because I think doing that is a little sick. But um, I will say that I did open a no trump on this hand uh, for the same reasons of your hand is hard to describe if you open a minor because you are too strong for one minor, two minor, and too weak for one minor, three minor. So, uh, but I will not, will not suggest that to you. So if you open a club, um, East is going to overcall one diamond, South is going to pass, uh, West is probably going to try one heart, uh, try to get to their major suit fit. Um, North is going to bid two clubs, which is going to let East off the hook. South is going to pass, um, and West is going to probably just bid two diamonds now. Um, or they might actually try three diamonds, like an invitational diamond bid, and East is just going to be like, well, I don't see where we're going here. So they're going to play three diamonds. And, um, you know, obviously the contract was different at our table, so uh, I'm not going to go through and try to figure out why exactly uh, East-West make four diamonds and not five, but um, I think that you're going to lose a diamond and a club for sure, and the question is, uh, what's the fourth, what's the third trick they can take? I don't know. But uh, if you can see, actually, um, East-West, what they do make is they make five of either major if you want to play in the 5-2 or the 4-3 fit. And that's just because the major suit splits are so friendly. So um, if you play in a major and you decide to go all out, play for both suits 3-3, three, three, then, and then you pick up the diamond suit by playing um, the ace of diamonds and then running the diamonds through south then you will actually make five of a major, which it would be a very good result if you manage to do that. All right, and I think this is the last board. Um, so here, uh, East deals, and uh, most Easts are not gonna have a bid for this, so you're gonna pass. South passes, West passes, and North has that good hand, so they're going to um, they're going to open one spade, and now East has a two no bid to show both the minors, um, and uh, South should jump to four spades. So they have a little something, but not really that much, like five spades. And um, if West trusts their partner, then they will bid five diamonds. 
Um, and now North has an interesting problem here. Um, and what I chose to do was I chose to bid five spades because uh, based on the opponent's bidding, I figured my partner did have a singleton diamond. And once you pre-give your partner a singleton diamond, there are a lot of cards that you can put in their hand where you can finagle out five spades. So that's what I ended up doing. And unfortunately, um, what partner had was not quite enough. Uh, and uh, the queen of hearts was on side, but uh, the hearts were 4-1. So uh, if you do double five diamonds, uh, which is the other option, they go for 200. But... Um, I was really feeling like partner's four spade bid showed spades, like spades, you know. So, you know, I thought that five diamonds was not going to be compensatory for our game. So I decided to take a shot at five spades and hope for the best. And uh, if you'll see that um, if you do double off five diamonds, you'll end up giving getting about five and a half more match points for doing that. Um, and as to what's right... Um, it kind of just depends, like, on your partnership tendencies. Like, if they bid four spades and it really just shows, like, five spades and out, roughly, then I think that, uh, you really want to be doubling five diamonds. Uh, but if your partner might bid f four spades with, like, a little extra and a singleton diamond and to be a little more aggressive in the auction, you know, not allow the opponents, like, a three or four diamond bid, uh, then now, you know, your decision is a lot closer here. Uh, and I'm still not entirely sure what's right. Probably doubling five diamonds is right, but, uh, uh don't quote me on it. <laughs> All right, uh, and, uh, so we did not play any of these other boards, um, so I will not go over them. But, uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and, uh, hopefully I didn't say anything that I'm not meaning to say, like, you know, I'm sure at some point I called like a spade a club or something, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to figure that one out. But um, yeah, so if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to uh, let me know. Thanks for watching.